Hello. Hi, Ramin. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Chung. Good morning. Thank you. It's actually getting evening here. So, Ramin, you are from North America, yeah? Excuse me? So, you are from, yeah, Chun, you are from, where are you from? And welcome to the oh. team. I'm 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 from uh, DUIQ, formerly known as Messenger. Okay, which country? Like you said, oh, good country. morning. I, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I assume America, you are from. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm in America, but I'm, I'm oh. originally from Taiwan. Yeah, because like yeah. When <laughs> good morning, I was like, okay, right. I'm not America resident. Yeah, we are from Europe, or at least I am. So it's getting late here. Yeah, let's give a few more minutes for others to join. And let me share my screen. So while we wait, you can perhaps start uh, putting your name on the hack MD meeting minutes so we know who joins the meeting. So we have a light agenda today. So we have time to have a conversation around the roadmap and have, probably have time for additional topics as well. So if you want to bring up anything, please feel free to add it to agenda and we then take it during the meeting. So the agenda is the action item review. I think we have two action items from last meeting. And then we have a quick announcement on SIG co-chair, followed by the SIG roadmap discussion. And I see we have 10 people now. I suppose we can start slowly by looking at action items from the previous meeting. So. We had our previous meeting on 14th of May and the two action items from that meeting was kicking off the co-chair nominations on SIG mail list, which I did, I think, on uh, May 18th. So that's done. And the second action item was about the roadmap discussion on the mail list. And there were a few mails there. And we will look at the roadmap during today's meeting. So both action items are done, which I will update the uh, meeting minutes with those. And the second uh, topic is co-chair nominations. So uh, as I mentioned, the co-chair we had, Christy had some other uh, commitments and she excused herself from the co-chair position. And then we, had, we opened up the nominations again. 18th of May, and Trace nominated uh, Kara as the co-chair, I think this Monday, or a few days ago. And Kara, I see you accepted the nomination, so thank you for that. And perhaps you want to introduce yourself to the rest of the team? Yes, hi, I'm Kara. I work at Clubbies with the Jenkins X project. I'm honored to be co-chair of this SIG. Thank you for the nomination, Tracy. And I'm really look forward to working with Fatih on organizing the SIG and building it out. So it's great. Thanks, Kara, and welcome. So this will really help a lot. It's it's yeah, it's fun thing, but at the same time, you know, it's sometimes it can becomes difficult to you know help the community with the organizing thing. So thanks a lot again. So I think we are done with that because the nomination period ended 12 
UTC during today, and Kara was the only nominee. So we have Kara as co-chair, and we will help assist the community to run things, do things. And the next topic. Uh, so, Fatih, uh, yeah. I didn't mind if I, if I could jump in. Uh, I see lots of uh, new people on the call, which is awesome. So I was wondering if we could spare maybe a couple of minutes just for folks to say hi. And so we kind of reintroduce ourselves or, and the new folks can also say what's of interest or if they're just here to learn or interested in a particular topic. I'd love to, um, yeah, just say hello to everybody. Yeah, I think we can take that right now before we start talking about the roadmap. So uh, I go through the Zoom attendee list and perhaps Chun, welcome to the team and perhaps you want to introduce yourself again. Sure, <laughs> thanks. Uh, this is Chen Hongxia here. Uh, I'm from, uh, well, I work at E2IQ. And, uh, well, someone asked me where I was from. I was originally from Taiwan, but being in America for, for a while. Yeah, and, oh, um, so uh, right now I'm working on, like, a, I'm technically of a, like, a project called Dispatch, uh, which is uh, our, like, a, our in-house like CI CD solution in Kubernetes. And that's why I got interested in this uh, SIG. Hi everyone. Great. Hi, welcome. Welcome. And I see Jerob there. Hi. I this is Jerob. I'm a software engineer at Google. I'm here uh, representing the Tecton team. Um, yeah, which is like a project as part of CDF. And um, I'm a software engineer at Google, as Chen Hong said, like, if you're sharing where we're from, I'm originally from Kenya, um, but spent, went to college in Boston and currently live in New York. Welcome. Hi, welcome. welcome. Thank you. And Ravi? Yeah, hey everybody, Robbie Lockman. I work at Harness. Uh, I run their evangelism program at Harness. Very excited to be here. This is actually my first Linux Foundation SIG. I, I actually didn't know what a SIG stood for until recently, so <laughs> very excited to join. Um, I represent Harness. I live in the Atlanta area, um, from Atlanta, live in Atlanta, and all things Atlanta, so very excited to be uh, participating, everybody. Welcome. Oh, and Shun, I used to work at Benzosphere years ago, so great to see this. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so have I missed anyone? I think the other meeting participants have been around for a while, so I think that's all for today. So, hi, Jackie's here too, Fati. Oh, hi, Jackie. Hi. Yeah, you, you are CD Foundation, yeah? Yeah, CD Foundation. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. welcome, Jackie. Thank you. So, uh, maybe we can move to the SIG roadmap if there is no other topic to bring up a quick one. So, uh, I want to start again with thanking Tracy to uh, kicking off this. I think it was a month or two months ago, Tracy took this or I started the document on Google Docs with some initial ideas. And uh, since we have been meeting for a while now, and there are few common areas that are appearing based on the conversations we have been having within the SIG and based on the presentations we are uh, listening from different community members. Based on those things, I went ahead and included this uh, new chapter there to start conversation about focus areas because when we talk about interoperability, it's pretty broad and it may be a bit challenging to you know tackle the whole area as a whole. So because of that, I put some use cases that are based on what we have been experiencing within Ericsson or across different open source communities, followed by some of the areas which we can perhaps start talking about and perhaps start working on. And then a proposal on how we can work on those things, perhaps by creating work streams and asking 
interest people into join to those work streams and drive the topic forward and perhaps reach out to other communities either hosted within CD Foundation or elsewhere to create a team and work with those topics. And I sent a mail to mail list to, you know, point to the proposal. And I think Tracy, you brought up this additional topic on identification and coordination on uh, working on usable libraries with specific example on GoSCM. So I just want to stop talking right now and just open discussion with both for the areas and the proposed way of working with those. Yeah, and I'm happy to say a bit more about uh, the Go SEM, which I think could be a very um, kind of specific thing that we we work on or we drive for in in this group and find find the right people to get involved. So if you click on the link, um, and I'll just say a bit more of what this is. So Go SEM. So the SEM is uh, source code. Source code management it was originally a library that um, was part of the drone IO project and drone is uh, another CICD tool um, but this library was pretty useful and uh, the Jenkins X folks forked it for use in Jenkins X and then they created a few enhancements they had a readme and, and some other features and Tekton also um, is interested in using it um, so at the functionality is that it lets you connect up to uh, different source code management and it kind of fits under the whole, for those familiar with Jenkins X architecture, this the project, uh, the Lighthouse project, which is to give, you know, proper integration, regardless of uh, whether you're using kind of GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever, it's the standardized way of um, just being able to let any tool connect into that. So, what, tried to see what the drone folks wanted to do. So Christy submitted this issue. We didn't hear back, um, but regardless, uh, we were thinking about how we could have a shared place that both Jenkins X and Tekton could use. So is that putting it under Tekton? Is that putting it under Jenkins X? Or what's emerging is sort of saying, should we have a CDF set of libraries as kind of a, a standalone project or library would probably be a, a better description. It's not something you can use itself, but this would be kind of blocks that uh, different projects could use. And we would encourage uh, a lot of projects in CDF to, to use them rather than having their own implementations. So um, yeah, well, I don't know. What do, do folks have any thoughts on that? Is that too specific or I don't see I was hoping we'd have some of the other uh, one of the Jameses on, but I don't think they've made it today. So um, this is Shun here. I don't personally know Brandon, who I think is Brandon, like who is the maintain, main maintainer of the Go SCM. I don't personally know him, but I did a couple of contribution back to Go SCM package uh, library like uh, a couple of times. So I was wondering, like maybe uh, I could ping and and maybe or maybe create a uh, GitHub issue for discussing this. Maybe he does so get more, he, he, get, he can, I don't know if he's seen this or, or not. But yeah, sometimes he's kind of busy, but when he I like, uh, get feedback on my PR, he's been really helpful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry, was that Brandon in on the Tekton side or on the drone side? John, he, he's from John. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so I think that would be awesome if we could, I, I appreciate that everybody in open source is always so busy and there's always hundreds of requests, but if you could uh, yeah, ping him or even if we could set up a specific call oh. around that where we get all the folks together and we kind of thrash it out, that could be great. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I, my ping is as many have any use or not because uh, again I don't really know him, but <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah it's, it's worth a try <laughs> if you've had fast communication. Should, should we should we try to invite the, the person or a representative from drone or working with this library to one of the meetings since we are talking about their you know contribution to open source? Maybe we can invite them to our meeting and have a discussion. Yeah, 
and I think that'd be great. I can even do do the demos like we've been doing with the knowledge transfers. Yeah. So Chun, can I action you on this? Because since you nominated yourself, kind of, and when you propose something, it becomes action on you. You know. <laughs> so you you said you can reach out to uh, Brandon from Drone Community. Yeah, I, I can try. Yeah. Yeah, you just ping and then we see what happens. Sure. You, you can you can uh, link few of us to that issue perhaps, and then we can follow and then follow okay. and uh, yeah, try to convince. Sure. I can just say Emrir. Uh, I think also this sounds like a very good uh, thing uh, in interoperability area. It's not really maybe interoperability between CI/CD tools, but between SEM systems. Then in this case, uh, but I was thinking, what is the backend interface then from this Go SEM to the Jenkins X and Tecton and and Drone? Is that some common interface as well, or is that uh, Kubernetes CRDs, or how how is that interface managed? Do you know? No, not off the top of my head. So I'd be doing what Fatty's doing, which is clicking, having a look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if we would have a common interface in the back end as well, that would be even better interoperability also between CI/CD tools than using the same OSEM system. Agree. And I think this kind of leads into, and maybe we need to invite Andrew Bayer uh, along with one of the authors. It leads into the whole, um, like again, there's a prow tool in the Kubernetes land, and then Jenkins X has its uh, kind of evolution of that, which is the Lighthouse project, and maybe that's something as well. That um, I think that covers all the the web hooks as well, having just a common way to do that. So, and it is a, a fixed API, I believe. making a mental note, probably action for me to um, invite, get those folks in, especially if we're going to have drone here. Let's get uh, Andrew Bayer, James Rowling, and possibly uh, Christy Wilson, who originally raised the, the issue. I am uh, typing here, Trace, so you can fix the names. So Christy yeah. and James Rowling, if I heard it. Mm -hmm. Correctly. Okay. Discuss goes, yeah. Okay. I think we I I hear some agreement on this topic. Like we are talking on Go SCM especially, but it kind of falls under this identifying and coordinating to work on reusable libraries. So and Go SCM could be the first one in this area which can paved way for other, you know, common libraries, investigation and so on. Exactly. And I think there's some work to be done on just where do those live? What is the governance around them? How do we kind of make sure everybody, like who, who are the, the committees and how do we kind of manage it? Should it just but, be part of Tecton or? But I was thinking like that could be the one of the work items for this work streams to you know work on a proposal okay we have this go SCM here it falls under this category or area and we believe it should be done this way okay under Tecton under CDF as a separate repo as a standalone project and then that proposal could be discussed within the SIG as well and then highlighted to the committee perhaps mm -hmm. so, like that uh, yeah, I'm wondering if we have any volunteers to, you know, uh, at least start the conversation around Go SCM, maybe, uh, and then ask for others to join the effort by bringing Christy and James, and we like this organic growing the team. Yeah, I could um, kick off a document and just put kind of the, the headlines in and then maybe get everybody to help flesh out different sections. So the folks are familiar with it, can just detail what the interfaces look like and what's a, a good way to limit and just have everybody else ask, ask the right questions and make sure it makes sense. 
Actually, and then I, people can sign up under that on that document as well if they are interested in contributing to that work. So we, we just get it going that way, perhaps. Yeah, Other I, than. I have a similar question uh, and comment as Emil. Um, does this does this even fall under the uh, Previ of CDF? When, when I'm I'm not terribly familiar with GoSCM, but from just what I can read, uh, just from what I've seen. Uh, it is a uh, source code uh, source code management type of a library. Um, how, how, I understand it was developed under the drone CI um, uh, project as, as something that they needed, which is very common. Lots of uh, lots of organizations that develop libraries that may not be under their Previ, but they need it anyway, and they say put it under the organization and GitHub. Uh, but from a just a functional area, does it even fall under continuous delivery CI, CD? Uh, I, I think it kind of does anyway, even though I commented it like that before. Uh, I mean, it's it's the more or less the entry point to a CI, CD tool, isn't it? Uh, one of the borders to triggering a CI, CD tool. The CD tool, at least, I guess. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. Tecton has this. Uh, is it called Tecton triggers? I think. Uh, and then there is this uh, Argo events. I mean, we have different uh, triggering points for our CD tools. Yeah, basically, it's a library to talk to GitHub, GitLab, uh, Bitbucket, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, how do you interact with uh, source control management? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I, I understand. I'm just thinking that if if we were going to, if that's if that's the bar, then you could start to include. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. uh, you could start to include uh, all variety of things that C CI CD tools touch. Uh, for example, uh, you know, CI CD tools especially ones that are dealing with uh, Kubernetes clusters need to generate images. Well, does that bring in the entire, you know, Kanako and, and all the tools that do that kind of functionality into CDF as well? Uh, if you start to bring, my, my issue here is, uh, there, isn't there already a uh, an organization like CDF that is overseeing um, SCM tools, where a, a library like this would belong, versus, you know, continuous delivery foundation. What would it be? I agree with Raman, right? Like not to be the one rocking the boat since it's my first meeting, but I was curious where, you know, where we draw the line in the sand, right? Maybe I'm just reading over like the, like the SIG port or the portion of the document. Uh, maybe it's like how things enter the pipeline, right? Like, cause there's lots of ways how you trigger things. There's lots of ways how you, you know, go about executing things. So every tool does it differently. Like Harness has specific ways that it, you know, needs to interact with the SCM provider. Is that what we're kind of garnering for, like interoperability, like at that low of a level? Or I think, was that what you're getting at, Raman, or am I off the mark, what you were hinting at, uh, hinting there? Uh, yes, um, <laughs> having been in this uh, industry a long time, uh, I'm, I'm always, uh, you know, I always have a, a, an ear or my both ears uh, out for scope creep. It, it's something <laughs> that just kind of it, it raises flags with me when, when I uh, when I see things are uh, that may not necessarily belong to a particular thing I'm working on start to creep in. Um, we, I mean, if if we if we use that uh, as the bar, there's lots of things. I mean, there, there's the image building, there is the access to uh, various other systems. Um, that that CI/CD uh, workflows touch, then do those libraries start to come in as well? So I'm just putting up a question for the group to to ponder. 
yeah i think it's very worthwhile and and i think it's good to have the discussions and yeah welcome the rocking the boat as well ravi um in some ways like i, I know when the talk started off the charter was to embrace the software delivery life cycle and and that you know as a remit is way too broad like we're not going to say okay let's have every kind of ide integration we could have or the certain things which you i would say clearly like are less obvious fits but actually the examples you gave of things like canico i, I would say yes if there isn't a place and there's a need um that it fills for for the projects that are pre-existing here then then that's that's a good starting point or that's a good way to do it and i don't think the industry is clean cut as to have you know source control management foundation or you know people say well why aren't some of these projects in cncf and everything cloud native there and i think it's just just evolves and it's just messy so uh, but but I, I think i don't have a problem with that Well, I, I also want to kind of <laughs> agree with both Ramin and Ravi and at the same time disagree because like, again, if I look at the, you know, domain and what we are using from the available tools and technologies, we, we deal with all these like CIC tools and technologies, okay, continuous delivery foundation, but at the same time, the surrounding ecosystem. And that is one of the reasons why I include this, the, the bullet point just above the Go SCM, because even though we might have Jenkins, Spinnaker, we are interacting, interfacing with other tools that are required for us to build up the pipelines. And yeah, it's right that where, where we should put the line, but it's not sometimes that easy, you know? And almost all the times we have to put our own fixes around these things to make them work or talk in certain way. And again, if I speak as a user, this is a problem we are facing on a daily basis, but especially the teams adopting new tools and new ways of doing, like some teams use GitLab, other teams use Gerrit, and that brings that problem into CI/CD domain when you start building up pipelines. Yeah, and uh, ju just once again, just following on with the devil's advocate um, uh, analogy, uh, if I'm a Go developer, uh, I can totally see um, that I would need Go SCM or a library like it to access uh, other various SCMs, you know, independent of any, whether or not it runs in a, in a, a CD pipeline. It, it, is a, it is a library to access various SCMs if I'm a Go developer. Uh, end of story, period. And I can totally see this kind of an, a library coming out of the drone organization in GitHub and going into the Go organization under the Go organization as a library. In fact, that's what it sounds like where it belongs. And we could say the same thing about all, all the various other things that um, also get accessed during a CD workflow. Think of all the authentication mechanisms. How many of those are there? Geez, we could go on for <laughs> days <laughs> coming up with things that, that CD uh, pipelines access and use. So just, just bringing up the, um, you know, just making, sh making sure we keep our focus on uh, continuous delivery uh, type of functionality. Um, you know, Tecton is very clear. Uh, Jenkins X, that's very clear. Um, Spinnaker, very clear. There's no, these are, these are CD orchestration uh, engines. There's no other place where they can live. In fact, that's why CDF was created. But all the ancillary things that touch uh, CD workflows, I just caution against uh, scope creep. That's all. Well, that was... Great point, but yeah. Then this could be an item for the team to, you know, like this focus area, if we agree, this could be a focus area in first place to, you know, come up with that type of, you know, input as well. Maybe it, it, the, one of the outcomes could be, yeah, it doesn't belong here. We, we should be careful about what we are, you know, 
bringing in and so on. Uh, just to comment from me again, I, I actually can kind of agree now to you, Ramin. Uh, I, I didn't see that it was a library at first. So as you say, it's it's really a Go library. So it's only intended to be used by Go developers uh, that develop other Go tools. I thought it was more or less of a standalone microservice that you can deploy in your Kubernetes environment and then interface whatever tool in your Kubernetes cluster from there uh, using no ordinary microservice interfaces. Uh, so with that said, I kind of agree with you that it's more likely to be included in the Go uh, community or something. Yeah. Or maybe it's in the borderline. Another possibility would be to put it in an umbrella like the GitOps approach. So um, there, then we can provide a library for accessing different Git repositories. This would be another approach. Yeah, but I want to take us back to top level, this actual item. GoSCM was an example of that area. So I think we may we, we, we may still want to you know look at this area as like identifying and the different reusable libraries perhaps in CI/CD domain. GoSCM may not be the best example for that area, but like I, I just want to ask opinion about this like an area. Should we have this as an area to focus as part of our roadmap and perhaps call people to join and drive this topic? So, so from my understanding, sorry again, first first meeting. So we're looking to provide interoperability, not only between our tools, right? Like I think that's like the ethos, at least what I've seen, but also interoperability with the ecosystem that we partake in. So like not to lose, like I totally get Emil's point, right? Like, hey, like, and like the challenges that you face at Ericsson, right? Like, hey, there's dozens of ways that people source, stash source code is that like, you know, I, I see it as a kind of important, but not maybe the primary focus, right? Like say, hey, it might be a subtopic for us that as we all represent different firms here, you know, our, I, I think the main goal might be for us to work together for our tools to talk to each other versus how our tools talk to the ecosystem. But um, that, that's just my, you know, my first half an hour. <laughs> the meeting day. Okay, but then, yeah, we, let it stay there and then we can revisit this topic during next meeting perhaps after people do some time to think on this and uh, i want to talk about some other areas included here perhaps starting with the first one is pipeline standardization and languages actually this was this came up when we first proposed the uh, sig to cdf and i if i remember it correctly it was from tom uh, there was a discussion under the PR. Maybe I can open that uh, PR. Uh, and I think he was talking about having a bit to migrate the pipelines across different tools. And that is the reason why I include that as a potential area to focus on because it was brought up during the conversation. Let me find that. I think Christy commented under that as well. Yeah. One of the reasons he brought up was like, it's not easy to migrate from one CI platform to another. So I just want to ask opinion of all of you, if this is something that makes sense to perhaps Work on. I, I think it makes perfect sense, right? Like, you know, I again, like, you know, what what I read at a high level about the SIG was interoperability, and like any sort of standard, like, you know, each one of our tools that are very different, and even in the verbiage, right? What got me excited was like that chart that someone had about like, hey, each, we even call the pipeline workflow trigger. We all call it different things, and so just trying to standardize. I would think that would be pretty. It's substantial to come up with a, some sort of standard, but. Do 
ditto, ditto on that on Ravi's comments completely. Okay, so but then we keep it as is, and then we can use it as well. And the other reason why we like why we have these areas is basically like to find who might be interested in working in these areas. And I reached out to Tom. He was unable to join to this meeting, but I will keep bugging him because he is the first one to bring this topic up. Perhaps he can reach out to community and see if anyone else is interested on this area and see what happens. And the second uh, area included in the roadmap is this event driven approach to CICD because you know, I think we had uh, presentations from Captain and Eiffel and also CNCFS cloud events. And the events are everywhere, as I put there. I'm wondering if this is something people would want to you know, start working on. Or if it is, if it makes sense to have this as an area to work on under the SIG. Yeah, again, Emil there, coming from, from the AFL community, and I presented AFL some time ago, AFL is all about events. So of course I'm interested in, in event handling here. Uh, but it's it's maybe both event driven CICD, but maybe even more the bullet that I added later on there the pipeline data for traceability and visualization, which is one solution to that could be to use events. So yeah, of course I would be interested to, to talk more to people about how events could help us in interoperability between CICD tools. Yeah, that sounds really interesting, right? Like a lot of times, at least from my experience, an event might be like an SEM hook, like something is kicked off that you have to start up, but you know, events might be for looking to expand our horizons, right? Like, hey, there's system events that we can capture to kick off a pipeline or other type of events and, you know, some sort of SEM event. Is that kind of what the purpose of that was? I don't know if, again, background-wise, like, looking for different ways to, like, trigger a pipeline, looking different ways to make sure that, um, you know, we're capturing events that would cause work to happen. What was your thought on that, ML? Well, well, one aspect is uh, driving the flow, as you said, uh, triggering the flow or the pipeline or the workflow or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one aspect of it. But the other aspect is then uh, collecting data from the pipeline uh, to be used for measurements or traceability or visualization or whatever. Uh, so have a common format of uh, providing data to some external consumer or it could be a consumer within the cluster as well, if, if you like, of course, but uh, uh, well, yeah, I would like to discuss that more, the, the option to use events for propagating data from our all, all our CI-CD tools. Yeah, that's pretty important. Like maybe we can rename it. Like I, I just thought events were like triggering stuff, but that's, again, we all capture data in a different way. We all expose data, like all our tools in a different way. So maybe just standardization of output I'm not sure a good name for it, but um, yeah, I like it. I like the topic a lot. And, and I, what I would like to focus there on is, is the, the pipeline data itself and not maybe, I mean, we shouldn't maybe compete with the Prometheus or other metering engines or such, uh, because I think there are perfect frameworks there already for that kind of data. Maybe we could interface those, those uh, data sources with these kind of events or something. Yeah, like a pipeline uh, or standard, yeah, like just yeah. sort of format. So I don't maybe think we should reinvent uh, monitoring data or metrics data in that sense, but it's more pipeline diagnostic data or something like that. Uh, to, to visualize what happens in, in, in your pipeline in the cluster, for example. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes it makes total sense. Um, event event uh, processing and management is something that I don't care what you've done. Uh, I don't care what kind of system you've written. Uh, if it's more than ten lines of code, all of a sudden you you start to think about, oh gee, do I need to uh, tell? Do I need to tell other? Uh, are other 
processes interested in something that happens in, in my code? And the answer is almost always yes. And how do you do that in a very decoupled way? Well, through events. And so it's just such a fundamental uh, uh, pillar of, uh, of any, sorts of, any, any sort of workflow processing. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, and uh, to Emil's point, um, it's, it's actually more than just uh, data that's produced during a pipeline. There are just so many various systems, especially in enterprise uh, workflows that are interested in things that happen in a pipeline and they, they wanna hear about it. And it's not just data. It's they want to know that this X, Y, Z happened and they want to do something when X, Y, Z happens. And so it, it is fundamental. So complete agreement. I also completely agree as I'm working on Captain, which is an event based system for CD. So I'm also interested in this topic. Yes, I figured, Andreas, <laughs> you, you were definitely going to have a, both thumbs up on that one. Yeah. yeah that's great to hear. So uh, let me then let me add the people who agreed on this as people to you know come together and just start talking and perhaps start a document like Hub Tracy proposed for CoSCM or the library usability, and then you take it from there. Does it sound good? So, so uh, do we say then that the focus in that group should be events for, for any purpose, or do we focus on something to drive our, or to trigger our pipelines, or something to provide data, or provide knowledge, or insights? What's, I think what would be the focus? Uh, I think you should you should define the focus and then come and talk about what your findings are and then see if it makes sense to even further, you know, split it to different areas underneath. Hmm? Yeah, like if you have a common data format, like you can do a lot, right? You can encompass all of that. Let's say we came up with some sort of common format to extract data. Like if, if, the, if the CI or upper part of the CD system receives that data, it can react in a different way versus it exporting the data. So there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of art of the possible there, which is pretty exciting, right? So maybe they could be both. Okay. So I'm just adding this comment as well here. Does this, I think what you mentioned, Emil. Santi, are we, organizing like right now in real time the the beginnings of what will be these work streams so we'll have this uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's it's kind of that way you know it's like we may we don't have to you know approve or agree on things people just shown interest and they can at least come together at least they know who is interested in specific area and then we can take this discussion again during the next meeting and then discuss how to you know, move forward if these are areas we officially agree. I don't know the word because, you know, we are a special interest group. We, we are not project. We just let provide forum for people to talk. And that's the intention with this exercise, to be honest, at least to me. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. And I believe just in terms of process, um, I know Dan Lawrence is pretty interested in um, maybe kicking off some kind of interoperability summit, making sure representatives from the CDF projects are there. And I think this could help inform um, the areas that get focused on or how we prioritize the different things, perhaps. Just, just a thought. Yeah. yeah. That's actually, I want to ask that, but maybe we can take that as the next topic. Once we are done with it. And I think it was Kara, you asked the question. Yeah, it's like, again, that brings us to this, like the process or what, what is, what are we talking here? Like, again, it's a few areas we have been talking about last few meetings, and this is simply trying to capture those areas. And again, we don't have to agree or approve anything here, but this is a proposal. Like we can call, okay, we have work streams per 
these areas like event-driven approach or you know, pipeline standardization and then you can say okay these are the work areas or focus areas or work streams identified by the SIG and then we can even go to the committee and present this to them saying this is what we came up with is there any no official way of conducting this type of stuff if they say no do whatever you, way you like then we perhaps say yeah this is the work stream we have a driver we have a group of people working on this area and then here we go that that sounds great i just want to we should make sure it's very open so that other people who are not on this call can also join in i'm sure a number of people would be interested um so i'm just thinking how we open that up and make that yeah. really perfect. I think we, we need to, you know, as you suggest, we need to publicize this, socialize this on mail list again, and then come back to this topic and revisit this frequently to give chance to other people to either join the existing areas or come up with ideas when it comes to different areas. Yeah, I, I believe in community. So again, uh, the event driven stuff, it's obvious there are multiple people that are interested in that, uh, that area. Maybe they can take the lead to come up with some way of working and present it during the upcoming meeting. And then we take it from there rather than trying to make up some, you know, process. But then, yeah, uh, perhaps Kara, we, we can discuss this offline as well and then spam those people who signed up for these areas and get this going. Yes. We really work Sounds on good. the roadmap. It's been around for the last few weeks. And any other topic on the roadmap? Anyone wants to bring up an idea or an objection? Okay. I think we had a progress today on the roadmap, which is great. And, uh, yeah. Or should we add quality gates? So I would be also interested in this topic. Can you add that to the document, Andreas, directly so you can describe yeah. that better than yeah, sure. just trying to guess? Yeah. So Tracy, I want to come back to that uh, interoperability summit topic because I missed the technical committee meeting last week. And then I've seen the topic, there wasn't too much details about it. Can you summarize the discussion or? Yeah, no, I think it's, um, they had been an original plan. Dan Lawrence was trying to drive uh, for a physical face-to-face, -face, but that was pre-COVID days. So now I think in some ways it does become easier but I think he's trying to work out uh, how to get uh, the project leads together um, to talk about interoperability and how to structure that. And yeah, all, all that. And all I know is he reached out to a couple of us just to say, would you like to help organize? Um, so and that's as far as it's gone. So I think the first thing we'll do is probably get a few people together come up with some commitment and a, a broad time frame and then open it up to to other folks to to see how we structure it or i don't know treat it a bit like an unconference perhaps okay then yeah then we can reach out but we can maybe take this topic again during take committee meeting next tuesday yeah um, state our interest as SIG, you know, we have people interested in this topic and please include us in any conversations or when the summit happens, even before it happens, perhaps in planning phase. Okay, so uh, I think we are done with the agenda. So anyone wants to bring up any topic? I'm just curious what we have um, for upcoming meetings, if we do have any demo scheduled or if we need to do a bit more outreach uh, like we're doing with the drone folks to to get other projects in the ecosystem to come and talk to us i remember ramin promised to have a demo for us so yes i know uh <laughs> it is uh, it is a continuously evolving thing 
uh, there's just lots of stuff happening uh, here at eBay. Uh, the not the greatest of which has been that my boss of five years just left and uh, just left the company and I am sort of in uh, management limbo right now. So I'm, I'm please believe me when I tell you that I am at the first opportunity that I get to put something together. Um, I will definitely have something to show you folks and I am working on it. It's just there's lots of other things that are being that are interfering um, with me doing that. So uh, just hang in. I will have something to show you guys soon enough. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And we appreciate that you can still spend your time with us uh, at these meetings. It's becoming more and more challenging <laughs> as the weeks go by. But uh, yeah, just I, I appreciate you guys uh, just bearing with me while I work through a lot of things here at eBay. Thanks. I'm sorry for picking on you, but you know, I, I really want. <laughs> no, it's not, no problem at all. <laughs> I get it totally. Uh, it's just uh, I, I need some time to to catch up on a lot of uh, other logistics things that are going on here at the company. It, I think we haven't heard from Spinnaker community, and I, my attempts to reach out to you know our more folks, I failed with them. So, anyone knows Rosalind? I think she is the outreach committee. Yeah, Cheers. I'm talking to a bunch of Spinnaker folks on Friday, so I'll see if I can find someone to commit to coming in and doing a demo. Yeah, that's and, great. Uh, uh, we've got I remember Ravi we talked, from, no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, we've got like Ravi from Harness, maybe we should get a Harness demo scheduled from our interoperability. Yeah, I could, I could definitely show a Harness demo. The, the sad part is it's not very code code oriented. Um, but we, I can show you what the platform looks like. That's not, not an issue. Yeah, I think fine. we also talked about Argo some time ago, didn't we? Uh, we wanted a demo from Argo, Argo City. Um, yeah. So yeah. I I can ask uh, some of the Argo team whether right, Andreas, Argo you had some contact there, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you had an action item actually, Andreas from yeah, yeah. yeah and. <laughs> And actually, um, I have to follow up on this. Uh, we missed that. Sorry. <laughs> also, regarding Argo, actually, I was about earlier to, to ask about the language document or the Rosetta Stone that we are creating. And I think uh, I asked some day there that we should add also the Argo uh, names and Argo things to there. Uh, so maybe um, Andrea, too, you can ask them to, to add it as well. Yeah. Um, but which part of Argo would you like to see? Would you like to see Argo rollouts, Argo events, Argo um, CD? So the GitHub well, ops approach. Or Argo workflow. Yeah, actually, all of them are kind of interesting to us. Maybe yeah. Argo CD is the most interesting, but but to me, Argo events is very interesting as well. Uh, and maybe Argo rollouts is interesting. It's more, I don't know, more similar to Spinnaker, maybe, or those use cases. So, so I guess a little bit of all, I guess. Yep. Yeah, I would there is some, some merge, isn't this so some merge ongoing also with uh, what is it called? The um, the other company? Flagger. Was Argo CD that was about um, to merge. WeWorks. WeWorks. Uh, WeWorks, right, yeah. So I don't know if we have yes. anyone from WeWorks to this presenter. So um, I've missed the last um, SIG meeting, but um, Stefan Prodan was presenting, right? Yeah, he did Flagger. Yeah, yeah he's, he's from GitHub. Right, Flagger was there, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And I guess the other thing is whether there's also interest at all in any of the Tekton-based platforms, knowing that we've got uh, D2IQ, I know we've got some folks from Puppet in the community as well. So just depending on what we want to see and what, what we feel is useful, I think. That, that could be of interest just to see if, you know, are we all kind of doing the same things in slightly different ways or? Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. I think we have some work to do. And also uh, GitHub, you know, the actions, and we had some discussions in the past with GitLab folks about common format, for execution or something like that. 
So anyone knows anyone from GitHub? There. Okay, I, I think, think I, yeah, Teresa. No, I was saying I think I've maxed out my action item, so I'm not volunteering anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. That's good. Just pace myself. <laughs> but I think we have some work to do to reach out to some people and harness. We have uh, Ravi for Argo, we have Andreas. So we consider them as done deal and Spinnaker and GitHub. That would be good to hear from them as well and have them with us in the group. But any other topic? Um, I did. It's uh, regarding your guys' interoperability podcast. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update on your guys' performance in the first two weeks. So you guys had 101 downloads. Um, and I'd love it if you guys have more topics uh, so we can get maybe like a follow-up, um, like interoperability podcast number two. Um, maybe we discuss, uh, maybe go into more detail about the roadmap or we talk about um, the Rosetta Stone. So if you guys are interested, please reach out to me. But yeah, congratulations. You guys did really well. Um, that's... Great to hear Sorry, Jackie, I, uh, what was the number? I missed it. Um, yeah, let me look again. So it is 101 in two weeks. Great. Yeah, congratulations. I think this was an effort from Fatih, Kara, and we had the, the CTO of Puppet all, all doing a panel. So Yes. Yep. Good fun. Thank you for having us, Jackie. Thanks. No, thank you guys. It was so much fun. Yeah. yeah, I felt bad after the podcast because my internet connection was unstable and I bought a new router. So. No, but it turned out great. <laughs> Did you listen to it? <laughs> yeah. Are you telling me you didn't listen to your own podcast, Fatih? No, I, I couldn't stand my own voice. <laughs> I work so hard to edit that. <laughs> now that's your AR. You got to go listen to it. Yeah, I, I listened. I am just, but I, I have a new router. So it's, it's, it was good in the end. So thanks for that, Jackie. And everyone, if you have ideas about podcast ideas about the interoperability area or the focus areas we are talking about, like event driven CI, CD, and so on, please reach out to Jackie and then we continue pushing this area forward. But yeah, we have three minutes left. So if there is no other topic to bring up, I want to thank all of you again for joining this week's meeting. And we will have our next meeting on 11th of June, assuming it's not a public holiday anywhere in the world. So have a nice day and keep safe, everyone. Thank you. Thanks all. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.